Welcome to NARAL's The Morning After. Each Thursday, our podcast brings you the latest on reproductive health care, progressive politics, and the fight to keep abortion safe and legal. NARAL's The Morning After is a production of NARAL Pro Choice Ohio. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ProChoiceOH. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Kelly. Hey, welcome back, Kelly. Thank you. What so, a rare privilege. <laughs> it is. Uh, so have you been watching uh, all the, the shit in D.C.? Oh, you have to narrow that down. There's so much. Uh, was it uh, Trump riding around in a truck like a big boy? Uh, was it Gorsuch he, was, he wasn't actually riding in the truck. He was just sitting in well, a yeah, still truck Well, yeah, of course, I'm not like going to let him do. drive. He Criminy. looked exactly like my kids, like when they're like, do you want to sit in the driver's seat, boy? Except for grumpy. <laughs> I mean, most people get excited about that sort of thing, but now he's grumpy. <sighs> so, yeah, I, I, I've, I've been following the doings down at the swamp. Oh, God, I thought they were going to drain that place. Mm. Um, so, uh, so today's Friday, uh, March 24th, uh, which means that the Neil Gorsuch hearings are now over. Finito. Uh, so we heard from all the senators. We heard from the nominee. Um, we heard some really excellent statements from just citizens who came uh, to testify before the committee, uh, including Amy Hagstrom Miller uh, of Whole Women's Health fame. Uh, she's so incredibly awesome. Um, so you know what 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 do you think of? This week's circus. I think the thing that struck with me the most is every time I tuned in and saw Judge Gorsuch answering questions from a woman, he seemed completely put out okay. and mansplaining. Like, you know, one of the senators would say, um, you know, they would describe a case, which they clearly were familiar with, and were asking him questions about, and then he would explain to them what the case was. And then they were like, no, honey bunny, I know what the case is. I'm asking <laughs> you about your ruling and what that says about you as a potential lifetime person on the Supreme Court. And he was just like, oh. Like, uh, uh, it was so disrespectful. Right. Um, and then Lindsey Graham gets up there and they're all like, you know, like having a best girlfriend's chit chat. I'm just like, it was just such a farce. Yeah. Lindsey Graham uh, and Gorsuch, that was sort of an interesting thing to watch. What was even more ridiculous was Ted Cruz. Oh, God, it was so creepy. Yeah. Ted Cruz got up there and was asking him questions about uh, the um, the book about uh, exploring the universe. Um, yeah, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Thank you. What is the what is the meaning of life in the universe? Forty two. And then they all like giggle about it because it's some inside joke that they and they were just going off on all sorts of craziness and l literally laughing it up. And then Cruz's time ends and it switches to Al Franken and Al Franken <laughs> in this masterful stroke starts asking him all of these very serious questions mm -hmm. about a case involving a truck driver who almost froze to death uh, and, and ultimately got fired because of this horrific situation that he was in. He chose to save his own life and not endanger motorists. As on opposed the side to of the staying highway. in the truck. <laughs> And so the the tone change from the Ted Cruz silly hour to Al Franken hitting him with some really serious pointed That's questions, true. that was a, an incredible moment. And it just made your head spin to watch the mood in the room shift like that. Well, some people are serious about this being a, a lifetime appointment that will impact this country for generations. And right. other people are just full of crap. Right. Right. So there you go. I, I think Cruz and there was, fell in the crap. That yeah, night, so. yeah. Well, and there's there was also some weird exchange. I can't remember which senator it was with, where he was talking about they were talking about rodeos and and putting kids on uh, sheep um, to to ride around like they're cowboys on bucking broncos. And hey, y'all, I grew up in 4-H and everything, but uh, even I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, right. Sure. This, this is about, you know, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, the future of the country. I, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the most important question for us came up uh, from Senator Dianne Feinstein mm -hmm. um, when she pointedly asked Neil Gorsuch, you know, his for his views on Roe versus Wade. Big question. She straight up, yeah, called the question right there. 
uh, his answer was that uh, he recognized Roe and, and the sort of same question and answer came for other cases. He said that this was a legal precedent of the court, that other justices uh, had come before him and reviewed these cases and established a legal precedent. Right. Um, he, he said that was the case for Roe. Uh, he sort of repeated it as being also true for Planned Parenthood versus Casey that this precedent is what should stand um, yeah, but we heard that nonsense before. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the it's the talking without saying anything answer. Yes, I agree, it's a precedence. Well, yeah, that's a fact. But what we really want to know is, you know, would you, on the court, um, rule to overturn that? Right. And, you know, set the country back, you know, 50 years. And he did not answer that question. And, you know, we've seen that from other nominees um, when they went through the process, um, when they, before they went on the court and then had them rule against us and whole women's health and other things. So, right. which is clearly, you know, going against, I think, the tenets of Roe. So yeah. his answer wasn't an answer. Right. It was a cop out. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we won whole women's health five to three. In June. Yes. <laughs> Not like 100 years ago in June. Right. So we've got this new language that five justices, you know, all agreed. It was five to three. Did you say five to four? Five to three. Yes. Uh, okay. Because this was after uh, Justice Scalia had died. Right. Uh, but there was still three votes. Uh, so, you know, he's he's going to be joining three members of the high court who don't give a shit that Roe has established a legal precedent. Yeah, like Roberts, who was one of the three. Right. Who gave almost an identical answer. Right. Uh, so all of this, you know, even though he gave uh, a uh, an answer that if you're not paying attention, you're probably like, oh, he doesn't care. It's a legal precedent. This, this uh, nominee is still just a horrific threat uh, to all Americans who care about uh, reproductive freedom. Well, and when you look at the people who are excited about his nomination, um, all of the anti-choice groups who are pushing so hard, extremists like Operation Rescue, right. um, you know, who think it's okay to, you know, shoot abortion providers. Um, when these people are excited about a nominee, uh, I think that's, that's plenty of information for me. Right. Uh, so the... The newest point is that there have been so many developments uh, yeah. elsewhere in D.C. Uh, that really seriously call for the full attention of Congress. Um, you know, the, the revelations that the FBI has been investigating, uh, you know, was investigating members of the Trump campaign um, about connections to Russia during the campaign. Um, all of the, you know, the the tons of cash, millions of dollars that have flowed into the pockets of Paul Manafort when he was the chairman of the Trump campaign. All of this combined um, have led to uh, different groups and members of the Senate to say, hey, we need to delay this nomination process. Let's just press pause on this until we can sort out exactly how far into Washington, D.C. does Vladimir Putin reach? Well, and I think the thing that is so troubling is that we have, you know, people in Congress who seem more concerned about getting um, their shill on the Supreme Court right. so that they can overturn Roe versus Wade and, you know, rule against workers' rights, LGBTQ rights, work, you know, rule in favor of corporations as people, all of these things. That agenda is more important to them than the fundamental basis of our democracy. and. I think the thing that troubles me so much is, you know, it used to be we disagreed on the issues, um, but in the end, we were all Americans. You know, we we all shared a fundamental set of values, a commitment to the democratic process, and to see so many people who are in elected office who took an oath to uphold the the Constitution and defend this country against enemies, foreign and domestic, it's shocking. Right. It's really shocking. And that they would even think of going forward with a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court when it's already been vacant for a year. It's been vacant for a year. These same people were the ones who did not give Merrick Garland a hearing for no reason. Right. Now that there is a reason to have concern, they're they're trying to rush that through. Right. And they're trying to rush it through, I think, because they're worried that where there's smoke, there's fire. And this I is think their one shot. a fuckload of fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a, an inferno. Yeah. 
yeah, there's, there's a ton of fire. And these are the guys that prove that it's okay to stall this. It, it's okay to wait and leave, you know, a seat vacant. Yeah. So if it was, if it was good for Garland, uh, then it's fine for Gorsuch. So let's, let's hold. Um, so, uh, one of, uh, one of judge Gorsuch's, um, uh, big rulings, uh, was the Hobby Lobby decision. Um, he sided with corporations, uh, over women who are trying to access birth control. Uh, our friends at Lady Parts Justice, <laughs> um, have put together an amazing video. Liz um, Winstead, you're a goddess if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, they, they've done it again. And I had a conversation with, uh, with a couple of, of the comedians on Liz's team, uh, with Abby and Julie. Oh, uh, so you love can, these women. So you can listen to them, uh, talk Hi, about, Sharon. uh, <laughs> They could talk about uh, how they came up so with this So I'm video. talking with Julie Rosing and Abby Holland. Uh, they're part of the Lady Parts Justice team uh, who's just unveiled a brand new video. Uh, I'm just a pill. But uh, first, um, how are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. We're, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's sunny. Today. It's still very cold here in New York, but, you know, it's sunny, which is nice. Yeah. Um, we're, we're kind of the same here in Ohio. Um, so, uh, if you could, for, for our newer listeners, uh, and viewers, could you tell us a little bit about Lady Parts Justice and how that, how the whole idea came up? Yeah, man. So the Lady Parts Justice League is a nonprofit collective of comedians that use humor to fight abortion stigma and work to get, uh, douchebag anti-choice politicians out of office. We were and our vaginas. Yes, yeah, and our vaginas. <laughs> Our, our founder, our co-founder is Liz Winstead, who, you know, she's started the Daily Show. So, like, she's made a living off of taking political bullshit and making humor out of it. And uh, she just, this was kind of a very personal thing for her. Um, you know, through her, through her experiences, she just saw that there was a need for more attention to be given to the things happening on the state level specifically in regards to reproductive rights and what politicians were doing to um, restrict access through trap laws and stuff like that. So, you know, she started us as like a means, another activist group to really bring this conversation to the pop culture space. And we both are um, writers and on the creative team. So we, you know, we write everything from, you know, the videos that we produce and um, Julie is the producer of the podcast. Yeah, we have a podcast that uh, we try and do weekly, or as as much this as This is Repro Madness? Yeah, Repro Madness is the name of the podcast. And we have guests on that ha are, work in different aspects of, of this space. But we mainly try and just stay on top of the shit that's happening across the country, because every week there's a new thing in a new... Mainly, in t a lot of it is in Texas, Texas I yeah. will say. A yeah. huge chunk. Ohio is kind of equally as yeah. crappy. Um, they seem to mirror each other a lot. But yeah, we just try and uh, bring a humorous tone to it. Because if we don't, Gabe, then we just all get very sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. We did some trainings here where I was giving people sort of an overview of everything in Ohio. And at the end of the training, everyone in the room was like, oh, God. They were just <laughs> yeah, we're going to go eat it. really depressed. Now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's, there's Lady Parts Justice and then there's Lady Parts Justice League. What's the difference between the two? So they're, they're just they're different entities, right? So the Lady Parts Justice League is our um, C3, C3 nonprofit. nonprofit and the other, the Lady Parks Justice is C4. So we're just kind of restricted on certain things that we can say on one or the other. And um, yeah, so we keep Lady Parks Justice and the podcast on that so we can kind of talk about anything we want. Yeah, we can say whatever we want. <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. Say, yeah, yeah say, say, hey, we hate this guy. You <laughs> shouldn't vote for him, but you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so it, as an organization, you guys have been doing a lot of great things. You had the first ever Golden Probe Awards last year, which was just, I mean, just kind of shocking as to how many people were involved in that. Um, Ileana Glazer and Abby Jacobson from Broad City, Sarah Silverman, Sashir Zameda, Wendy Davis, Samantha B, Jessica Williams. I mean, that was, we get that was an incredible yeah. crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that like, just being a part of a, an event like that? 
I mean, it started, Abby was there at the inception a year before. Like, it, it was a year in the making. It was so much work. And yeah, we, I think we were do we were writing um, something for, I think the Emmys or the gold, the, the Golden, Golden Globes, Globes were happening and we had this idea, we're like, oh, and it was supposed to be a one-off of like, we should we should do something called the Golden Probes and we should be, you know, highlighting uh, excellence and misogyny. And um, the, Liz liked the idea so much that she's like, no, this is going to be like a thing. Yeah. This is going to be our own satirical award show. We're going to get all these people involved. We're going to make our own categories. And it just it snowballed into something that ended up being so big and great and um yeah we're really excited to see what it'll turn into this year just because you know when you pitch that to people uh as and it's the first time you're doing something like that it's like right. people are like what is wow. that wow <laughs> but you know yeah. it went it went so well it was and it was such a cool event to be a part of and we got to dress up. There was a red carpet. Yeah. You know? Oh man, the set was amazing. We had like a whole set designer. It was, it was cool. And it, and I think like it, it is one more step in in bringing this conversation to a more like mainstream audience yes. of like really highlighting that um, this this stuff needs to be a part of the dialogue more of the time. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, advocacy, advocacy organizations, organizations in the states. states. Um, there's, um, there's only so, so much that we can do and, and such a, you know, so wide of an audience that we can reach and having that sort of extra layer of, you know, actual celebrities. Um, you know, yeah, and like a fun idea, sort of yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I was, mm. I didn't want to finish your sentence. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Like, you know, if we can get someone out in the middle of Indiana who's like, I like award shows and they watch it and they're like, oh, shit, I just learned a ton about my local state person I'm gonna go do something like then yeah it was all worth it right and, and the one thing one thing that was really cool is when we announced the people that were nominated for all these for the awards at the actual show we showed the footage of them saying these crazy things that they were saying right and hearing the live reactions of people who didn't know these politicians were this and this wacko. Uh, that was really cool because that that's that was the whole point of it is to really highlight that these politicians are are clueless and they're legislating our bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It it feels sort of like the um, the criticism of House of Cards. You know that that later seasons it it was too difficult for them to actually overcome the real insanity of what was happening in yeah. government. <laughs> They're like, we God. cannot top this because what's actually happening is like, we couldn't make it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I was just looking through your, uh, your YouTube channel and some of the videos, I mean, all the videos are hilarious um, in, in that sort of disgustingly frightening, hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was looking through, you've, you've parodied a ton of things, Snark Tank, Texas, uh, there have been a couple state of the uteruses. Uh, you guys did the Benny Hill parody, <laughs> running a vagina yeah, through we New were, York City. We were, Julie was a uh, uh, Trump, the and I played Trump the pussy. Mask. Yeah, yeah, for anybody who hasn't seen the uh, the Benny Hill, uh, God, it's it's <laughs> priceless. <laughs> Zach, <laughs> Zach, hashtag. hashtag. Uh, you did the uh, Miss Super Tuesday pageant. Um, there was a not Groundhog Day, personhood cops, but I think the the video that was the one that that sort of everybody in our office stopped and watched was the information uh, parody uh, of of Beyonce um, talking about all the uh, attacks in Louisiana. I mean that one was it really made people stop and think and watch for a minute. It was incredible. Yeah, um, there was. So much work that went into that. Um, we, it was it was really important that I mean, that it be voices of women of color. So yes. we reached out to women in the community uh, here in New York, comedians, and they were all a part of writing it and producing it and, and being and in being it. in it. So like the women that you see in it, um, the majority of them were a part of the the writing process. Yeah, that was an incredible, like being on set for that and kind of like helping out with production stuff was, was great. Like we had awesome costumes, um, you know, we shot in, in, in an actual clinic, 
um, it was really exciting because A, like the song is great and B, like sure. just, Beyonce's song is amazing and our song par was parodied so well. Like the, the women who wrote it were really great. And um, yeah, it was just, it was really exciting. And the, I remember the first time that I saw the whole thing, we screened it at, um, I think in Washington DC at a show we were at. And it was like, you could feel in the, the place, like the energy and the people really digging it. And that was like a really exciting moment to kind of like see it in front of like 500 people for the first time. It was, it was great. It was, and we're, we're proud of that video. Oh, it's, it's incredible. We'll, we'll put a, a link to that one in the show notes. I might even embed it in the thing because everybody needs to watch that one. And, you know, having, uh, having gotten to know some of you guys' team, uh, seeing Joyelle uh, and Sharon in there and the dancers, um, you know, that it just made it, uh, you know, an incredible thing to, to see. Um, oh. So we really enjoyed that one. Um, but so uh, your new video is is why we asked you to come on uh, our podcast today and talk about, um, you've got uh, uh, I'm Just a Pill, which is a parody of the uh, Schoolhouse Rock, I'm Just a Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, how did this come up? I mean, this Jamie, uh, Jamie Miracle, our deputy director, uh, first saw this uh, at a gathering of abortion providers um, in, in Louisiana. And and texted me right away. She's like, "Oh my god, the Lady Parts Justice team has really just you know done it again. This is this is the best video yet." Well, that's uh, great. Yeah, she was thrilled. How did this come up? Th this video has been in the um, making for a long, very long time. time. Like we're talking like years before we as writers came on. Like this this was in the process of being made like two three years ago. I want to mm -hmm. see even even from the beginning. It's and crazy how much inf misinformation exists sure. and especially and it, it was important for us to put the video out this week in tandem with the Gorsuch hearings just because of, you know, he doesn't seem to understand that a uh, plan B is not an abortion. So um, this, the video for listeners, it just edu it educates people on what plan B actually does because there is misinformation out there that says that plan B is an abortion when in reality, you know, it, it blocks ovulation from ever even happening. And so, you know, if there is, if there is no pregnancy in the first place, you can't have an abortion. Abort <laughs> you can't abort it. Yeah. So, and it was, it, and it's such a, it's such a cool idea. I remember when we came on and they were telling us about the, this, this concept and I remember being really excited about it. And then, you know, I think, you know, we, I think they wanted to find like the, the right person to, you know, animate it and they wanted it to be like really good. And so I think they just, the timing was, you know, it was a long time in the making, but like it was a perfect time for it to come out when everything was finished. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. And we should say that it's, it's, um, it's voiced the, the main, the character, the pill, uh, <laughs> is Leah Delaria from Orange is the New Black. She plays, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, she was at your Golden Probe Awards, uh, last year. Uh, and she just completely rocks this video. Yeah. Um, yeah she's so, so good. talented. I, it, I want to say it was written by Holly Miranda, right? Or the musical and company meant was. There are a lot of people there involved. There are a lot of people. It's like yeah. Leah Delaria, Holly, Holly Miranda, Miranda, who is an amazing musician. Um, just it was just so important that I mean, when you when you are seeking to clarify something, also in a funny way, it's so important that it's done right. right. <laughs> you know, um, it, it was interesting. It was fun to see the process of this video just like hearing it first like reading the lyrics first and then hearing it from leah like hearing leah's uh voice of it and then seeing it and then seeing it the mm -hmm. the animation is just so hilarious oh my god and it's, it's it just it hits the right i think it hits the right like nostalgia factor of you know at least in our generation and generations before us too grew up watching schoolhouse rock and how it just kind of hits a nerve of like, oh my God, I'm learning something. So it's mm -hmm. like a, it's, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's, I think there is something to that of, uh, 
you know, a sex education in general in this country is so far behind that you would need to start with something as simple as a children's cartoon uh, <laughs> to bring them up, up to speed with where they need to be in terms of, uh, you know, how women's bodies work and right. you know, oh my God, we what, do that. what birth control options are available out there. Yeah. We got to do like a Sesame Street thing that's like, this is a woman's body. Well, <laughs> Maybe that's inappropriate, but that's how my mind is sometimes. It's almost like it should be it should be an explainer video for politicians. Hi, you're a politician. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna explain <laughs> the female body. You know what? I I swear to God, that conversation happens way more often than you think. <laughs> it's uh, so crazy. And, and our uh, someone in our office has had to have a very basic level birds and the bees uh, sit down with a pretty high profile elected official. I can't name names really? here, but, oh, man, but yeah, amazing. it was, this is how, how women's bodies work. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my God. It's so funny. And that's, I mean, that's, that is the basic problem. That is the, with all of these laws and all mm -hmm. these things that's going on, it's this lack of, lack of education from the bottom up to the quote unquote top, you know, it's, we need to educate people more and that's what we're all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could use that from the bottom to the top. So. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, so yeah, this video, uh, you know, we, we saw it on Huffington Post. We saw it everywhere in the news. Um, what's, uh, what's next? We are going on a tour this summer. A big, long, big, like 15 crazy. cities, 15 cities, city tour. We're like starting in Atlanta, I think, but we're swinging through Ohio. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely be in Cleveland. Um, yes. The whole point is it's called the Vagical Mystery, Mystery Tour. Tour. <laughs> Vagical Mystery Tour. And wow. the whole point is to, one, do comedy shows that include a talk back at the end with people that work at the clinics and are just as like a, a way to bring our audience and the community that we attract through our comedy to the people the clinics in the workers, clinics yeah just as like trying to connect those people and like bridge that raise awareness but then also we're going to be um doing clinic outreach at each in each city and setting up with each clinic with what do they really need do you need a bush planted somewhere do you mm -hmm. need papers i don't know in, in disposed a, in, of yeah. or something like do, we, do you need a i tell you what preterm still needs a fence, fence was stolen so. That was so insane. I mean, we can talk can. about that forever, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's really exciting. We're going to be announcing that soon um, with all the details and stuff. It's really, that's really Magical exciting. Mysteries Tour. Magical okay. Mysteries Tour. Which ha it happens to be also the same year of the, the, the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour album. It's like the 50th anniversary of it or something this year. So it kind of is like that's a perfect. coinciding situation. Yeah. You, okay, so uh, we'll have the we'll have the pill video in the show notes, uh, and we'll absolutely be looking forward to uh, what's next from Lady Parts Justice. Um, so, do you guys want to give your your Twitter handles uh, as a shout out to let people know where where people can find you? Like the LPJs are are per, or both man both, both of them. Both. Take your pick. Oh, let's see. So follow, you can follow Lady Parts Justice and Lady Parts Justice League on Twitter, and um, we're at LPJ League or at Lady P Justice. Lady P Justice. And we've got a really great Twitter and Instagram game going. Our social team is the tops. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, this is Julie. You can follow me at, at Midwest New Yorker on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, man. And I'm Abby. You can follow me at Abby underscore Holland. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Thanks so well, much. That sounds good. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you guys when you're back in Ohio. Oh, I can't yes. wait. Yes, we love it. See you, dude. Today we're you watching, uh, watching C-SPAN, uh, following the tweets, uh, to see if Congress is going to vote uh, to overhaul the, uh, the ACA uh, and essentially end Medicaid as we know it. These loons have had seven years to get their act together. They're like, this is terrible. The Affordable Care Act is terrible. Meanwhile, all their kids are, you know, taking advantage of the contraceptive mandate and right. being able to stay on until they're 26 and all of the things that have revolutionized 
health care in this country. And they voted, what, 60 times to repeal it when when they knew that, you know, Obama was still in office and, and would not sign it. And now they've got their big chance. And it looks like a circus down there. They have no idea what they're doing. Right. Uh, I was listening to NPR yesterday driving home and someone was asking the question of, you know, this mess, can it be blamed on Paul Ryan? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, all of all of those votes, he was in Congress and he had the opportunity to roll out solutions yes. instead of just saying, oh, well, I think there's problems. Uh, yeah, governing's hard. Well, right, he's President Trump. That one out. Uh, right, Speaker yeah. Ryan. It's hard. Yeah. So uh, yesterday, uh, they said that they were going to hold a vote uh, at 7 p.m. That got uh, <laughs> that got postponed. They said they were going to vote at 8 a.m. this morning. Um, apparently, now they're saying that they're going to vote this afternoon. The Freedom Caucus, uh, all these guys, had to sit down with oh, uh, with Mike Pence to see if they can get their shit together. You know. When, when the haters can't decide how, how to uh, go after you the best, that's always amusing. I, now now their, their big selling point is, oh, hey, if you guys don't vote for this, you won't be keeping your promise to defund Planned Parenthood. And I'm just laughing. I'm like, um, everyone who's gone up against Planned Parenthood has been left in the rubble because right. – one in five women in this country have been one of their patients. This is a hundred year old trusted uh, healthcare provider that, that serves communities where no one else sometimes is available to serve them. Right. And if they really think that that's the selling point that they want to defund Planned Parenthood and take away your health care and then face you for election in 2018, um, in the words of president Obama in one of my favorite debate moments, proceed. <laughs> Please proceed. <laughs> Go right ahead, as my mom would say. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, what what they're sort of joking about would be incredibly destructive to people's yeah. lives. Yeah, and 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 people would would take action, rightfully so. I, you know, look, this is the first step through the House. You know, the Senate, um, you know, for for all their faults, is is uh, more deliberative by design. Um, they are more moderate um, because they're not um, represented. In, they don't have people coming out of gerrymandered districts. They have right. to represent a full state. So um, it's it's amazing when you have politicians who don't pick their constituents and they have to actually listen to the whole state, how much more moderate and how much more common sense the policies that they propose are. Um, so, you know, this is very early in the process, but the fact that they, you know, have had so much trouble um, and have really just shown that they're they're just not ready for prime time. You know, the, the, these people have had seven years to to get ready to to govern, to push forward their agenda. And it's amateur hour, as, as uh, Nancy Pelosi said. It's been amateur hour. And um, hopefully that will be to the benefit of all of us who count on the ACA and Planned Parenthood for our health care. Hopefully that means that, you know, they will not be able to uh, move forward with this just tremendously dangerous agenda. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the positive aspects of Obamacare have been really, really illustrated uh, through the stories that people have been sharing with their members of Congress. Right. Um, the town know, hall meetings. Yeah. These, these are, are effective. People ask us all the time mm -hmm. when we have volunteer trainings and, and they say, well, geez, you know, they, they've kind of lost hope and they're asking, how can we really be effective? And, and these sort of, you know, situations where you get in front of a member of Congress or you write a letter yes. to the editor and you're sharing exactly what, you know, a specific government plan, a specific health benefit has done for you, having access to Planned Parenthood, having access to affordable contraception, these messages do get through uh, to members of Congress. Yeah, um, they really do. And, and one of the more... Um, modern tactics that I love is tweeting at these folks yeah. because a lot of these members, you know, they, they look at them themselves. Um, you know, sometimes it's handled by staff, but you know, these things get, they get seen, they get heard and they make a difference. Right. And so people just have to keep beating that drum. Yeah. If you feel that you sharing a story wasn't an effective, uh, wasn't an effective tactic, the solution isn't to stop doing it. It's to do it 10 more times. Keep doing it. Yeah. Um, so everybody keep that up. 
Um, attacking Planned Parenthood was emphasized by Donald Trump uh, just yesterday. He was he was really sort of leaning in on that. As, as he's all over the place with Planned Parenthood. Yeah. First he's like, oh, we'll leave you alone if you quit providing abortion care. Now he's like, hey, you guys have to pass this so you can defund Planned Parenthood. I mean, he. Ugh. <laughs> And on, ugh, I think it's where we're going to leave, uh, leave Donald Trump. Oh my God. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if there's a vote tonight. Um, hold your breath, people. Hold your breath. Yeah, hold your nose. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here in Columbus, uh, we had some news this past week. Highway Hodges is, is hitting the road, Jack. Is hitting the road. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. <laughs> Uh, Richard Hodges, the director of the Department of Health, not highways, completely unqualified. <laughs> yes, uh, is resigning from his position. Um, he was uh, uh, he was John Kasich's right hand man in terms of attacking abortion providers all across the state. Uh, after the state legislature set up the entire concept um, of these transfer agreements. Uh, it was Hodges that really used them uh, as a weapon. Uh, Kasich's flying monkey, if you will. Yes. Um, uh, we call him Highway Hodges because he came into the position not from a career uh, in healthcare administration, but his pol uh, previous <laughs> political appointment of the Turnpike Commission. Um, I so love when they used the picture of him with the Turnpike the behind the him. And I was like, oh, you inspire such confidence in me, Rick. Yeah. Um, but his real, the real reason he was chosen wasn't because he did such a bang up job at the Turnpike Commission. It's that, you know, back in the day, he was in the state legislature. Yes. And he was part of what the press uh, uh, deemed the, the caveman caucus. Yeah. You know, he because they were the so anti abortion, anti, anti women's rights. And that's why he was chosen. Yes, um, because he was willing to be K six flying monkey and you know go after abortion providers without any medical justification. So I think the real question now is, okay, we went from Dr. Wimslow, who um, I personally think had been forced out because he wasn't as willing to go along with this. Yes, um, but the he was certainly qualified. The previous department director, right, was a doctor. And now we had Highway Hodges, who, in his three years, I don't believe did one press interview. No. Nope. Frightening people. They can't put the guy in the room with a reporter. Right. Um, and now um, let's see who they choose next. Um, I hope it's somebody who's at least qualified, because as much as I. Um, don't want someone who's going to be going after abortion clinics. I also would like someone who, um, I don't know, knows something and is qualified in case there is another health epidemic, like, I don't know, Ebola or something else. Right. Like somebody who actually knows what's up. That would be great, Governor Kasich, <laughs> if you're listening. God. I can't imagine if John Kasich listens to this he show. He should. There's such wisdom here. That'd be hilarious. We could be such a help to you, John. Uh, the other, the other last note uh, on Richard Hodges. Um, people might have heard his name uh, when celebrating the right for uh, everyone to marry. Um, the the case that went to the uh, U.S. Supreme Court uh, that legalized gay marriage uh, for the entire country was uh, Hodges versus Obergefell versus Hodges. Um, yes, Obergefell versus Hodges. That's that him. <laughs> um, so it, it was Ohio that gave the nation uh, marriage equality, uh, but they had to get past Richard Hodges first. So. I kind of love that, you know, he'll have a place in history as being on the losing side of one of the most important civil rights advances in this country. Yes. So bravo, Rick. Well done. <laughs> Uh, also in Columbus, uh, the state Supreme Court uh, continues to be something that we're keeping an eye on. We discussed last week uh, how Justice Sharon Kennedy had spoke at a Greater Toledo Right to Life fundraiser. 
yeah, a fundraiser. Um, I I was waiting for them to come back and try and claim that it, you know that they didn't make any money off it, and I was so waiting to respond. Well, it's not our fault you're bad at fundraising, <laughs> <laughs> but you charge people thirty bucks a plate for scrambled eggs. Well, they eggs. also had sponsorships. Yeah, um, and and a state supreme court uh, headlining the event, uh, a justice headlining the event. Um, so we are continuing to watch uh, that case, uh, continuing to call on. Justice Sharon Kennedy to recuse herself from uh, two cases that will be appearing before the court later this year. Uh, one of them is the preterm uh, single subject, subject budget um, saying that you can't pack abortion restrictions into a state budget. Mm -hmm. uh, the other case is the one out of Toledo. So Sharon Kennedy <laughs> went to Toledo to talk to greater uh, Toledo right to life. Who played an instrumental role in getting this, this legislation passed. Right. Um, that's that's directly threatening capital care, uh, the clinic in Toledo. Um, and then this week, the Toledo Blade put out an editorial saying uh, the state Supreme Court needs to agree, uh, you know, that when the they hear this court. case, they need to agree with the lower court and leave capital care uh, intact as Toledo's last abortion provider. Well, and, and I think, you know, thank you to the Toledo blade for always being the voice of reason when it comes to these things. I mean, they really pointed out that, Hey, um, under whole women's health, under equal protection, under so many constitutional, and of course, Roe, under so many constitutional, um, requirements, um, what the state of Ohio has done has has been against the Constitution and has been outside what is you know permissible for the legislature and and for the governor to do. I think you know, and I think they're so full of themselves right now that it never occurred to them that we would call them out for Justice Kennedy speaking at this fundraiser when they themselves, um, played a pivotal role, a uh, higher right to life and other um, chapters in getting um, a judge, Judge Black, to recuse himself from a case um, involving Planned Parenthood a few years ago. And his involvement with Planned Parenthood had been in the 80s. <laughs> he had been on wow. their board. Um, you know, it was a significant role, but he had not had a role with them since the 80s. And, you know, Ohio Right to Life and the other anti choice groups, you know, raised all sorts of cane about that. And, um, and, and then they act like we're being ridiculous when we're like, um, Hey, that was last week. Right. Um, and she help, was helping them raise money. Um, justice O'Connor came out in, uh, justice Kennedy's defense. and was like, Oh, well, you know, we have an obligation to come, you know, speak at civic organizations. I was like, aha, like the lions and the Kiwanis and right. the JCs and places like that who don't have a case that you just agreed to hear. Right. Um, there's just a huge difference in that. And the, just the amount of, uh, uh, nonsense that has come back to us pointing out, Hey, this is a conflict. Yes. And, um, you know, it, it will undermine, uh, the people's faith that, that, that this case will get a fair hearing. What's the big deal about recusing yourself? Um, uh, recuse one judge. I mean, if she wanted to speak there, fine, but recuse yourself. Right. Right. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, and then the last thing, uh, down at the state house, um, Jamie Miracle, our deputy director, she provided some testimony, um, to the, uh, house finance committee on the state budget. Um, that entire process is rolling along. Uh, for those who don't know, the state budget uh, is passed every two years. Uh, it's a $60 billion bill. It has to pass uh, by law. Um, we know that on June 30th of this year, we'll be watching, you know, John Kasich sign the budget. We don't know what's going to be in it right now. Or if any women will be in the room this time. Yeah, that's debatable. <laughs> um, but uh, Jamie went to testify in front of the finance committee that's beginning the budget process. Um, she made some excellent points. We're going to, we've got her budget testimony, uh, on the blog. We'll put a link to it in the show notes if you want to read it. Um, but it's one step of many in speaking to state legislators about this most important bill. Um, you have a chance to join us at the state house on May 3rd, uh, for our annual advocacy day that we put on with the freedom of choice, Ohio coalition. Uh, to talk to state legislators about the importance of funding health care and keeping abortion restrictions out of a budget bill. 
Well, and also, you know, one of the, I think the real highlights of Jamie's testimony for me was when she talked about how this, this legislative body and this governor have, you know, enacted so many restrictions on access to health care and reproductive health care and other things that they've contributed to the appallingly high infant mortality rate in Ohio. A report that just came out this week showed that an African-American baby is uh, three times more likely to die before uh, their first birthday than a white child. And the fact that, that this is not um, being addressed by making sure that, I mean, here we, here we are, we, we have, you know, in DC, people trying to take away access to health care, take away access to family planning, which helps people plan their pregnancies and, and, and do things in the most healthy way possible. And, you know, and here we have a legislature who's just chugging along like, like nothing's going on. Um, you know, it's really important that we come and, and we tell those stories and we talk about how life-saving this care really is. Yeah. Uh, so May 3rd, Advocacy Day, um, you'll join us uh, in the morning at the mm -hmm. Columbus Athenaeum for some training. Yes. Um, you know, a granola bar, a bottle of water, and then we'll head over to the Delicious. State House. Um, do a little bit of rallying and mm -hmm. then send people out in groups to meet with their legislators. Um, so we'll make sure that you know exactly uh, what to say um, and, and have a partner to go with. Nobody goes solo to a meeting. Um, it's, it's an incredible day. You can find out more information in the show notes. Uh, and also, I want to direct people to our Facebook page. We've been putting not only ours, but some of our coalition partners, a ton of events. So uh, go to Facebook, look for NARAL Pro-Choice Ohio, click on that events tab and check out the full set. There's a ton of things to do, a couple bolathons between now and, and then. Um, yeah, Monday night I'm speaking at preterm um, uh, in Cleveland. Uh, that's one of the independent abortion providers. I think we have a link to that yep, that's, on our Facebook. Uh, is that the one on March 27th? Yeah, Monday. Yes. Um, so check that out at preterm uh, in Cleveland. Um, the monthly reproductive rights happy hour is coming up. Um, mm -hmm. It's a new location, the bottle shop on, on the 28th here in, in Columbus. Um, Randy's going to be at the Dub Pub in Dayton on March 30th. Uh, I'm going to be with Annie uh, at a, a Stark County Library doing a microphone training on March 30th. Um, the preterm Bolathon is on April 27th. Uh, the women's women have options. Bolathon is on April 29th, uh, and then that brings us back to May 3rd Lobby Day. All of that information in the show notes. Please check it out uh, and join us at an event uh, this spring. With everything going on now, is the time for us to be together, enjoy each other's company, and raise some hell. Yep. Okay. So check that out, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>